Coach, you have said all along that you weren't really sure just because of the lay of the land what to expect on Wednesday. I'm curious as if that has changed in the last few days with, with how things have gone. <laughs> well, I think the good thing is we finally, Friday was the first day that we had enough people to go play five on five in, in what, 17 days. Um, so it, it I, in a way, it's, it's obviously it's helped us because that's how you got to play the game. But at the same time, uh, it's a little scary because you realize how much stuff you haven't gone through. Um, you know, it, it just, I thought about it today. If somebody plays a one, three, one zone, or, you know, we, we've, we've been trying to get press offense and things like that. Uh, you know, those are things we didn't do at the beginning because you were kind of building your, your, your groups and, and that, and then all of a sudden now you don't have 10 players, you don't have your managers, you don't have your, your grad assistants. So it's, it's tough to kind of simulate some of that stuff. So, you know, it, it, I, I'm happy we, you know, we had uh, Thursday mostly, to, you know, ten, for the most part, 10 guys. We tried to be careful with a couple of them just came back. And then Friday, Saturday. So you, you got a little more rhythm, um, got to play together a little more. We scrimmaged a little more on on, on, on Saturday. Uh, we couldn't get officials here because they're trying to quarantine the officials. So they're, they're um, you know, big week with a lot of games starting. So we, you know, the officials will be very, very important to us uh, having games and them being COVID free also. Uh, so it, it, you know, I still don't know. I have, you know, I've told many people and talked to other coaches. I think they're all, a lot of them are in the same boat. You just don't know how your team's going to react. You just hope you've done enough with them and, and they step up and make some plays. How comfortable would you be right now with, or is it unrealistic to think that you have some sort of rotation in mind? How, how does that work for you? Well, I kind of teased Rudy uh, uh, before, I, it, you know, because he could, it was a little overwhelming. And, and I just told him, you know, you, Rudy, you have no choice but to play. We only have, you know, at that time, we only had four guards. So. Yeah. Uh, you know, now you got Selton back, so you have five. So you, but you still, they're going to play. And and, um, but I, I, you know, I think I have a feel of who we talked about starting to build roles, starting to build our team, starting to build trust. Um, you know, trust. You know, as as a as teammates playing with each other, but also trust building the trust of the coaches. And um, so I, you know, we have a good feel, uh, but we haven't had, that's what the exhibition games and scrimmages would have been about kind of putting those in. We're going to have to just kind of play it by ear. Uh, I'm a little bit afraid of foul trouble uh, because uh, we had officials one game or one day, but we haven't had, you know, we, the coaches will ref, but you, you know, it's harder to do it uh, on a daily basis. And, and I, you know, our guy, I just don't want somebody to get fouls right up right away um and and you know have to sit it out so now your your rotation has changed even more so but i i think i have a good feel you know as long as we have everybody there and and then we'll just see how foul trouble goes and how guys play but i really want to get some guys opportunities if we can um you know in just a couple minutes here or there because we're going to need everybody as it moves forward i guess finally for me i'd like to ask you about just how much you are leaning on Dejuan and Mike in terms of knowledge of what's going on, how things are done here. Uh, it's what you guys do on, on and off the floor, I guess. I think it started back in May when they arrived there early. And then when, you know, Selton came and then uh, Rudy and, and Casey and then the whole group. But I think they set the tone for the culture uh, and the work ethic. And, and again, they're not perfect by any means, but they, they, uh, you heard Davion talk about Mike wants to win, and and I and that's both of them want to win. They want to do well as individuals. That's everyone has a little bit of an ego, and and they want it. But they they've really focused on trying to get the guys to buy in. We have a good group. They get along. They enjoy each other, uh, and 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 I think they they have the right mindset. Uh, now we'll see how we have. We, we've dealt with adversity because of the COVID and, the, you know, different things we've had to deal with, not being here, small groups, all the stuff they've had to go on through. But 
adversity in a game where somebody makes a run or, you know, things go against you, the ball doesn't bounce your way. Now, how are we going to step up? And that, that'll be the true test, I think, of leadership. Mike, Dejuan, Casey, Nigel, you know, whoever might be the guy stepping up. If Bruce, do you, do you have an idea right now? Do you know who your starting five will be for the game? Um, I got to wait and see how a couple of injuries uh, play out here the next couple of days uh, before uh, I make a decision. I, I, I know what I'd like it to be, but uh, I'm not sure, you know, exactly what it'll be because we've had some guys with some, some injuries, some guys that have sat out and, you know, so we'll see what happens here in practice today and tomorrow. Appreciate it. Hey coach. Hey, Bruce, jump off of that question uh who's been the player that's missed the most time during practices and workouts besides Luke Kazuki obviously yeah Luke has missed the most Carlton is uh, next uh, he's had a back issue uh, just starting to get him back um, and then we had some guys involved with contact tracing uh, and and the COVID and you know Surrey's missed some Selton missed some Drew Onus, our walk-ons missed some. Uh, so we, we've, we've had uh, guys in and out. And, and, and Casey's missed a little bit uh, as of late. And so we'll, we'll just have to see, play it by ear. And then I feel like we talked about this last week, but just again, can you preview Drake for us and give us a little rundown of what you expect on Wednesday? A really good experienced point guard at one of I think preseason uh, All Missouri Valley. Uh, they they played they won twenty games. Uh, a good offensive team. Uh, they had their big kid who was an integral part and would have been back transferred to Minnesota, but they did bring in a a, a, a big player uh, transferred in. I believe Seton Hall. Uh, they also have a grad transfer from UW Green Bay. I, I talked to my former player, Link Darna, who was the head coach and recruited him, said he's very, very athletic, talented, can make kind of a slash or rebounder. Uh, so they get gives them another older player. Uh, they get a couple guys that can really shoot the basketball. They're they're a pretty well balanced team and had a had a you know played well in the Missouri Valley tournament. And uh you know, I, it, it's both them and Colorado both have experienced point guards. Uh, and and I, I would say that would be the one spot we have the least experience. So it's a little bit, little bit scary for us, but we'll see what happens. Thank you, Coach. Excited to see you guys out there this week. Yeah, it'll be fun. Hey, Bruce, can you tell me what uh, some reasonable expectations might be for Davion just right away as a freshman? Well, I, you know, he he's going to – you know, I, I don't want to put too much pressure on him. I've, I've said he's maybe been the biggest surprise on some of the things he's done. I, good hands, catches the ball. I, I think his footwork is the biggest thing, kind of, you know, get in traffic, being able to keep his balance and, and still be able to manipulate and score. Um, I, you know, so that that's important for him. But I, I, I think he uh, – you know, if he can guard ball screens, if he can get out and do some of that, and he's gotten better at it, um, I think he can be a, a really good player for us. I, I, I think the future is really bright for him because, um, one, he's a great young man. He's got a good personality. He's got a big heart. Uh, been through a lot himself. Um, and and he wants to he wants to be a good player. So I, I think it's it's ironic. Some a couple of our guys. A lot of times you worry about they're too confident. Uh, I think one you know in Davion's case and a couple of our other guys, uh, we almost have to you know give them confidence, make them realize that they are good players and they're going to be okay. And th this tournament, the Little Apple Classic, was this your idea or how did that how did that get hatched from the beginning? Yeah, it, it pretty much was my idea. It, initially, you know, I called, you know, we wanted teams close, uh, obviously, to give us the best chance. Uh, you've seen a lot of tournaments cancel, a lot of teams cancel. Uh, we thought that was our best opportunity, especially uh, even late if we, uh, you know, had to, you know, add a team or something, if we had teams close or even change it where we could, teams are busting here. Uh, so we had talked. I talked to Tad about going to Colorado. Uh, he was trying to get Northern Colorado Air, Air Force and us. A couple things didn't work out. And then we, we kept making calls. And, 
you know, it just worked out with, uh, you know, Drake and then obviously South Dakota replacing South Dakota state. But, uh, you know, it, for our young team, you know, and we don't have fans, but still good for them. The comfort zone of playing at home. Uh, you got, you got your first five at home. Obviously they're none of them. Uh, they're not like any real cupcakes in that schedule. And with a young team, new team like this, what we've been through, uh, with practice, uh, you know, I don't feel comfortable with anything, but we'll, you know, I, I, it's it's much better to start with the first five at home than it is going on the road, that's for sure. All right, thanks, Bruce. Good luck this week. Thank you. Hey, Coach, Chucky Kemp. I'll be with Tim Welsh this week for your guys' games. I'm just curious. I watched Nigel Pack a little bit, just some highlights from – his high school days, it just looks like a kid who really is comfortable with the ball and can kind of control things. Have you seen that from him early on? Yeah, there's no doubt. And again, just like Davion, I don't want to put too much pressure on him, but he's a very, very good player. He's very knowledgeable, very skilled. Uh, I mentioned earlier, kind of, or I, I was on a radio thing earlier this morning. You know, I, I was in Indiana for a long time at Purdue, 18 years. And you know, recruited there coming out of, when I was at Southern Illinois and Illinois. But there, there is something about Hoosier basketball, the, the fundamentals, understanding the game, the coaching. Um, and, and he's definitely has a lot of that. He, and, and the thing that surprised me is he's strong. Um, you know, he, he's one of, on the bench press, he's one of our better guys. Uh, he ran a five minute mile, uh, which is really, really impressive. Uh, and so he's got endurance, he's got strength, he's got good fundamentals, good skills. Uh, he can play with the ball and without the ball. Uh, he can run off screens and shoot, and he can also, you know, make some plays with the ball. Uh, you know, just a triple-double in EYBL, I think, first time in history. There's been a pretty good players coming through that Nike tournament. So uh, it's a mouthful. And, and that same tournament, I, I think he had four double-doubles last year in that when he was uh, coming into his senior year. And another one was another almost a, a close to another triple-double. So a uh, really good player. Um, we expect a lot out of him, but uh, at the same time, he's a freshman, and we'll, you know, we'll see how he, he deals with all of this. I, I look at last year, and obviously a disappointing year for you guys, but almost a transition year from, from my standpoint that, you know, you were, you just lost that big trio, which is so hard to replace, impossible to replace. You have a tough season, but now you kind of lost some of those other guys. You get some more freshmen in here, some of those sophomores with experience. It feels like this is the year that you can really head in a direction, that a new direction for Kansas State. Do you feel that way? Yeah, there's no doubt. It, it, I talked earlier about the culture. It's been great. Um, uh, they, they, one, they're happy to be here. They're happy to have opportunity to play. They've really bought in, I, you know, our older guys, the returning guys have done a great job of, of making sure we, we have the discipline and the work ethic. And, and again, they're not perfect. And there, there's days I get mad at them, you know, 30 days of practice. That's a long grind without any scrimmages or anything, but uh, they, they've been good. And, and I, I, I really feel we have the makings uh, with the young group of keeping them together, we got everyone back, uh, you know, except for if, well, definitely for two years, if Mike comes back next year, and then we could have everybody except Mike for three years. So uh, you got to, you know, I, I think you have a good group to build with and they, they all seem to enjoy each other and want to be part of something special. Thanks coach. Good luck this week. Hey, thank you. Hey coach, Missy Heidrich, how are you? Okay. Missy. Um, I know it's been with the 30 days of practice, but you haven't had everybody and it's been tough to see having them come in. So do you feel like what you've been able to put in for these first two games is pretty vanilla? And then as they, as the games are going to go about shot clocks run down, how comfortable are you with some of that decision making here that you've seen in practice or even some of your small scrimmages? I think what you just brought up is one of the things I, I just went in the, the coaches, we kind of do it. We don't have as many meetings as we used to. So we stand in the hall and yell at each other with our masks on. And, uh, you know, one, I just went down the hallway and said, hey, man, who are we going to give the ball to? Who are we going to make the play shot clock at the end of the game? Uh, we're just learning, you know, and, and we haven't had even 
because we didn't get the scrimmage. Usually I scrimmage every five days, but we got to about halfway through and we, we couldn't scrimmage. So I, I, I don't know if you were on last week. I talked about we had big 12 reps one day and we had to play four on four. And one of those guys was a walk on. So it, it, you know, it's, it's, you don't have the same thing, but it, that's, that's the one thing I mentioned earlier. Uh, they can make me look like a good coach if somebody steps up and makes plays. And, and that, that's something we're going to learn as we get into this week and next week. How do you think this group has um, grasped the defensive concepts, um, you know, team defense, but also being able to stop somebody one-on-one? Obviously, you know, you can, you can minimize a lot of lack of production or mistakes on the offensive end if you can get stops on the other end. Yeah, it, it, I, I would say, and I mentioned, uh, I think on one of the earlier press conferences thing, you know, you brought up now what's hit me is the shot clocks, end of the game, things like that. But probably the sustained defense, uh, transition defense, sustained defense, those are the things. Uh, you know, I obviously when you had Barry and Dean and those guys, they were seniors. They Mac was one of the best ball screen defenders in the country. You felt comfortable. You knew what you're going to get every day. I, you know, we don't know right now. And, and. I'm just hoping the other teams aren't prepared either. That's, that's probably my biggest hope um, that, you know, we can survive it. And then you get film, even the film now we'll watch film and it's like, was that good offense or bad, or bad defense? And it, you know, so that's why it's always good to have those exhibitions and scrimmages, not just the experience, but also to have film to show them against somebody else and you can focus on something. So it's, it's going to be learning as we all go. Uh, unless you have a veteran team, you know, uh, and then Scott Drew has COVID and we hope he's okay, but you got a bunch of veteran guards like he does. It's a, it's a little easier to understand what you know, what's going to happen on the court. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks. Bruce, um, with your, with your bigs, what kind of versatility do you have there and what kind of, do you feel like you can, can play a lot of different combinations or, are you pretty much going to be set with a one, two, three, four, five type? Well, I think if you're if you're healthy, the the five bigs you got Casey, Davion, Surrey, uh, Monty, and and Antonio. Um, you know, hopefully get Carlton back. But you know, I think you you can use all those guys. Uh, I, I've talked all along uh, that you know so Casey and Davion give us an inside presence scoring that we haven't had in a while. Um, you know, and then Surrey gives you that athletic uh, guy that can, he can just rip and get to the basket, uh, you know, make some plays. Uh, you know, he doesn't know totally what's going on all the time, but, but he, he makes plays. And then Antonio and Monte have experience and they give you that kind of your natural four. Uh, you know, Monty's probably a little better defender. Uh, Antonio shot the ball a little better. Uh, you know, so it gives you some Thanks. Anything else for Coach before we let him go? Yeah. Hey, Bruce. It's Ryan Black with Manhattan Mercury. How you doing today? Okay. Hey, I'm I'm wondering what has been the most pleasant surprise uh, that you've noticed among the newcomers. Basically, something that you only kind of know now because you've been able to get on the court with them as opposed to talking with them via Zoom and just looking at their recruiting videos when you were recruiting them? I think the biggest thing is they want to learn and they've been in here right now this morning. uh, I bet there's six or seven guys up in our offices or around the facility watching film uh, with our coaches. And, you know, some of it, this is vacation and they don't have classes. It's Thanksgiving week, but uh, you know, they, they want to get in there. And, and they want to learn and get better. And that, that you don't know until they get here. Um, that and, you know, just putting in that extra work. Uh, they, they've been, you know, again, COVID has changed so much stuff and they don't have much, they can't go to Aggieville and they can't do some of the stuff that normally they would have done as students in the fall. But, uh, uh, you know, they, they, they care. They want to be in here. They want to learn. They want to get better. And, and then also, 
you know, Bruce, we kind of know where people are going to pick you guys based off last season and based off just having so many newcomers. But, I mean, you, you, you know, you've been working with this group. What are your expectations for what they can accomplish this year? Well, I, 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 I think, again, we got to stay healthy. Um, I, you know, I think the second thing is, uh, you know, we got to figure out who's going to be our consistent guys. If we can get consistent point production, um, I know we'll develop our defense. Um, you know, I, I feel like we can compete with people. And, and, you know, again, until they show us on the court in front of people, in front of you guys, um, you know, we're not going to know much. But I, I, I like some of our weapons. I like their unity. I like how hard they work. Uh, and and I'd I, I, I like our depth. But, again, we got to stay healthy. And that's, um, that'll be a big factor. Thank you, Bruce. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there anything else before I let Coach go? Okay. I, I did want to mention we're, we're doing a, a, a virtual clinic for young. Uh, we haven't been able to have camp. We haven't been able to have any clinics. Usually we do a couple holiday clinics um, for the junior Wildcats and, and, and also the Fort Riley soldiers kids. Uh, well, we've kind of combined it. it. It's combined with Operation Santa Claus, which is, uh, an organization that helped bring some joy and presence to kid, the soldiers' kids at Fort Riley. So we're going to do a virtual uh, clinic with our players uh, over the month of December. And, and the cost, uh, all the profits will go toward, uh, we're going to donate to Operation Santa Claus. So uh, if you can pr promote that a little bit, we would greatly uh, appreciate that. Uh, uh, just have our players on doing some ball handling, shooting, little challenges, some fun stuff, uh, you know, so bring some hope and purpose. Kids are sitting at home. They're not in classes every day. Uh, they can work on their game and, and get to know our players and also uh, get, we're able to bring some, uh, some Christmas joy to some of the soldiers' kids. So uh, it's Operation Santa Claus, they, I think it got, I don't know if Tom, you got out of release yet, but um hopefully uh, over the month of December uh, we'll be able to get some kids on there and, and they'll have a fun time and learn some about basketball and uh, we'll be able to raise some money for Operation Santa Claus.